Hello everyone. Today we are going to do pre-calc lesson 44, abstract rate problems. We are adding on to all of the abstract rate problems we've done so far. These are a little different. Um, they are more than just distance equals rate times time. They will include a price per item and the time to do a job. Okay. Now here are the steps that you should already be doing, but just as a reminder. First, identify the original components all of them, the distance, the rate, the time, or whatever that ends up being. Two, note changes that may be made. So if we're changing the time, or we're changing the amount of workers, or something like that, note the changes. Then three, we're going to solve for the unknown component. So our first example, Peter purchased P pencils for D dollars. OK, so we have our distance rate equals distance time equals rate times time. Right? In this case, our distance is pencils equals rate times price. So our rate is pencils over dollars. Okay, so our first rate is P pencils over D dollars. Now it says if the P pencils had cost x more dollars. So my rate 2, P pencils cost x more dollars. How many pencils could Peter have purchased for $20? So pencils equals my new rate, P over D plus x, times my new price, which is 20. Okay, so this gives me 20P over D plus x, pencils. Don't forget your units. Okay, so it's just like we were doing before, only this time we have price and something that we're buying. All right, let's do another example. Coach purchased B basketballs for X dollars. Again, so we're going to have basketballs equals rate times price. So my rate one is B basketballs over X dollars. Now if each basketball, each basketball had cost $3 less. So my rate two is gonna be B over X minus three, minus three from the whole thing. Okay, so if I made this into one fraction, this would be B minus three X all over X. Okay, I want to know how many basketballs could Coach Lisa have purchased for $200. So I do my rate times my $200. Okay. This ends up giving me Now, what I want us to look at, okay, is this is exactly how we did the last problem, okay? Nothing on it has changed. The important thing that has changed, our, our problem has changed, right? We are identifying the initial values of basketball's price and rate, right? So we have our basketball's, our price, and our rate, the rate I did basketballs over price, okay? But the problem is our price is per basketball. This is actually not how you should do this. I wanted to show you that it's different than the last problem because our new way will have price is basketballs times rate because we're looking at price per basketballs. So my rate is price per basketballs, okay? Notice how I did it before. It was basketballs as rate times price. That didn't give me a price per basketball. It gave me basketball per price. 
So my rate two should actually be x over b minus three, which gives me x minus three b over b. So the basketballs I can purchase is x minus three b over b times 200. Now what's the problem? Again, this is what we did last time, okay? Now I'm showing you these so that you guys can see the common mistakes that we make. We're putting it into the wrong equation, right? We have to look back at this equation. That's why you always write out your equation and always draw a diagram. Basketballs is price over rate. So it should be 200 over our rate which gives me 200b over x minus 3b basketballs. There we go. Okay. Now, a good way to check yourself when you're doing this is you can write the units for every single piece. Right? If we had done that here, we would have noticed that our units would not have canceled out to give me basketballs. All right, let me do another example. On an assembly line, M workers worked H hours to produce C articles. Okay, this is going to be a problem where we have rate times workers times time equals articles. Okay, so we had M workers worked H hours to produce C articles and we don't know our rate. We can solve for our rate. Our rate is going to be C over MH. Okay. Then it says D workers quit. So my new workers, so I have my rate. My new workers is going to be my original workers M minus D. And I want to know how many hours, so times time, can they complete the same number of articles C. So time will equal C over C times M minus D over MH. Okay, my C's cancel. And it leaves me with MH over M minus D hours. Don't forget your units. Okay. Do one more example. Trials had P pounds of food, and this could feed M workers for D days. So this is going to be rate times workers times time equals food. So we had P pounds of food. This would feed M workers for D days. We have to solve for our rate. So our rate is P over MD. Then we had 30 more workers show up. So we have P over MD times 30 more workers. So this is M plus 30. We're looking for time. And we want to know how long would the food feed, meaning we have the same food, P. So our time we will have P over P times M plus 30 over MD. Again, my P's cancel, leaving me with MD over M plus 30 days. It is okay that you have variables in your answer. There's nothing wrong with that. They give us variables as part of our problem, so variables are part of our answer. All right, that is all for today. Don't forget, I gave you guys that abstract rate worksheet to be able to help you. These types of problems are in there as well, and that should help you be able to understand abstract rate problems even more. So you can go study that as you're doing other homework. For now, that is all.